Welcome back to Fashion Guru, the Celebrity Designer Edition. Today, we're talking to our iconic figure, Joyce Abibio, on her designs and what has inspired her and brought her on this journey. Welcome back, Joyce. Thank you. I've got to say, you did mention something that I thought was quite interesting. You do uh, specialize in gowns. Mm -hmm. This one in particular is uh, talking to me here. It's quite interesting um, piece. Talk me through this first and foremost, and then tell me what your inspirations are uh, in terms of why gowns became your speciality. Well, let's start off with me because okay. this is a, a student's garment. So I see. Okay, someone uh, under your tutelage. Somebody, yes. Okay. So I can talk about that at some point. Mm -hmm. But uh, I love doing gowns. I okay. like how it moves, how elegant it can look. Mm. That's the reason why I love to do gowns. So. Um, that was what I specialized in. Did you wake up one day and say, gowns? Uh, you know, something must when, have happened, yeah. When you're learning design, you get to a point where you know the things you actually love to do mm -hmm. the most and you enjoy doing. Okay. So you figure out which area you really mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. to do. It doesn't necessarily mean you can't do anything right. else. You can yeah. do everything, but there are certain areas that you really, really love to do. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was the part I enjoyed doing I the most. So would you say then that, uh, your speciality is gowns. Yes. Um, and would you also say that if anybody mentions your name, the first thing that comes to mind is, oh, Joyce Abigail. Yes, the for, lady for who a does very long gowns. time, yes. Yeah. For a very long time, that was what I was seen to do. Okay. Most people, if they had a gown, a wedding gown, whatever it is, first thing, or even if it's skinty cloth, mm -hmm. they would come straight to me. Okay. And it's the first name that comes to mind. Right. So that's right. what I was doing for a very long time until school took over okay. some of what okay. I do. Wow. But this is a, a student's outfit mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. this particular student seems to also enjoy doing gowns. So, I see, okay. Because everything I've seen her do is more leaning towards that direction. That's so. Sorry. so Joyce, you're an extremely busy woman. The dimensions of what you cover, especially with regards to your university college, must be quite daunting and quite taskful. I would like to know whether sometimes you just hit a blockage and you feel, I need to get away. What do you do to regroup, to zone out and rediscover or, you know, refind your core of where you're coming from? Because it happens to all, the best of all of us. It does. And um, if we are talking about the school, mm -hmm. then uh, usually I take a break. Okay. I don't usually take a break that much. I'm always here. Too hard working. But um, <laughs> I try to take a break out of Ghana for a little bit and uh, take my mind off things for okay. a little okay. bit, you know, cut down on the stress and mm -hmm. all the things happening or look at something new and then come back and feel. Do you have a particular place you like to go to? Well, I'll say I go home because, home. Uh, and that is in San Francisco. Oh, I so see. Okay. I usually would go rest mm. up a little bit, mm. take my mind off stuff for a bit, and then come back and feel like I have energy to get back to That's what right. I do. <laughs> <laughs> so what does that look like for you? Time along the beach, massage parlors, relaxing in a spa? What does that look like for Joyce? Um, I, you'd be surprised that I'm not None of the that above. sort. Oh, I see. Really, if I have to go back and, and take a break, I would sleep. you sleep? Oh, because okay. usually I'm here from morning till 8.30 mm. almost every day. So sometimes it's just, you're just tired mm -hmm. and I need a break. So I'll sleep for a while and then uh, it goes right back to business. I have I things see, okay. I have to pick for the school and all that. So I go to do all those things wow. as well. I of course, like you fit in one or two of those things. But, uh, as well. Yeah. I would like to know what a day looks like for you. A day in the life of Joyce Abibio. From Where? the beginning to an end. And I know you'll have days that will differ. And no day is the same. But I'm sure there are certain facets of it that are always are almost constant through the week. What does a day look like in the life of Joyce Abibio? Work, crazy. Uh -huh. um, I, I really have a crazy schedule. Mm -hmm. There are days when I, I don't get out of my chair because mm -hmm. people are coming in and going out and coming in and going out. And I also lecture in the school as well. So um, I have my time that I have to teach a class. So I'm also in the classroom for some hours. So I have a really busy schedule. Uh, this school has morning, afternoon, evening. So I have certain times that 
I have to teach morning, afternoon, and evening class. Right, right. I can be here till 8.30 some of the days. Joyce, we've talked about gowns extensively. Is there any particular garment or outfit that you'd like to stay away from? You know, you're thinking, oh, that's too tedious, that's daunting. Do you have one that is sort of your uh, a no-go area for you? I thought you had figured me out by now. <laughs> I don't... Uh, I don't give up on things. Mm, I, mm. I, I, I think uh, giving up is not in my vocabulary. Mm. Lessons you have learned um, during this whole period. One, one, the one that actually stands out for you, where you think, this has been the biggest hurdle that has taught me the biggest lesson in my career. Okay, let me think. I haven't quite sat down and thought through this mm, before. I'm sure so there are many. This is something I have to <laughs> <laughs> think about. Really, we are talking about students or we are talking about work? Well, maybe just in general. Um, maybe something to do with opening up the business, some of the hurdles you encountered. Maybe something to do with uh, trying to impart your knowledge onto others and some may maybe not being as receptive as and understanding what you're trying to teach them. I think uh, maybe even it's the, 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 the teachers that you have in the, the lectures. <laughs> I think in Ghana there are lots of lessons to learn in, in everything that you do. and. Uh, you have to take it in stride, I mm. think. You mm. learn and, and you move on. Uh, you can't hold on to it. Mm. You mm. have to learn and move on and, and do the right thing. So. If I said to any student, give me one word to describe Joyce Avenue, what do you think they'll say? <laughs> Don't forget, we're going to try this later on. I'm sure they'll there. say I'm very tough. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe not that quite that word, mm -hmm. uh, but, but that's the word I'm going to choose to use. But I can see them saying I'm very tough and I'm strict. Mm -hmm. Strict, mm -hmm. yeah, strict might be it. Today it's been fun and we're finding out more about this iconic figure, Joe Savadio. When we return after this break, she's going to talk us through the conception of an outfit and how we go through the processes to the finished article that we've all come to love about her brand. Don't go away, we'll be right back after this. Welcome to Fashion Guru, the Celebrity Designer Edition. Today we've been talking to Joyce Abibio, one of the iconic figures in the fashion industry in Ghana. We've learned a lot about her and what she specializes in. Now she's going to actually talk us through the conception of a garment and how we take it from the beginning to the end. So Joyce, this is an impressive setup here. What is going on here? How does it work from beginning to the end? Well, uh, these students are preparing their final garments. Okay. And so they put it together, their collection. So as you can see, they've done a lot of sketches that eventually will translate into the, the ones they want to do as okay. their final collection. So she's been sketching this and mm -hmm. um, she has some that she's already done and put texture to it, color okay. to it, okay. fabrics that they'll use. And so she has quite a number of things that has been done. Usually to build your collection, what we have to do is to draw, put together a whole lot of it, and then I you see. select the ones that you want to use eventually. Mm. So there's a lot that she's done over here. Once this is done, then it moves, and the selection is done, then mm. we move into drafting the patterns, which okay. is what these, they are doing right now. I so see. We, okay. we take the design to doing the pattern, and the pattern then goes on to we do a test fit mm -hmm. so we'll do the test fit on like gray buffs like that mm -hmm. that way you can test to see if everything is in is in place okay before it's now put on the fabric and cut okay and then constructed i've got to ask are there a lot of people who are freestyling on the cutting and is it something you'll advise uh, as we, in cutting directly on the fabric without going through this process no 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 you wouldn't we, advise that. we don't um okay believe in that okay. because uh that you know this 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 is precise mm -hmm. so you know the left and the right is okay. still the is the same mm -hmm. you don't mm -hmm. want to guess and and this freestyle is guesswork I basically so see. if you see people who have seam allowances in their garments you can actually see they have they haven't two had. four inches in there you know is guesswork i see but this one is precise so you have a specific seam allowance that you have to use I see. I to see. do the work so everything is exactly to the measurement okay okay 
So that has been cut. First and foremost, we've had a sketch. Mm -hmm. Then we've come to the cutting. We've done pattern. This pattern. is pattern this is drafting. Pattern. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then when that is done, mm -hmm. she's done with the patterns. Then she'll do a test fit as this person is going to do. So you see, she's cut it on something already. I see. Okay. So that's so a test fit. Yes. So okay. she'll, she'll stitch it and then see that everything is in place. Right. And if okay. it is, then if it's not, then we come back to the pattern and do the correction. I see. Okay. And then before it goes on to the actual fabric. Ah, I now so understand how this important is what we're doing. it is yeah. to have this pattern. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So what then happens from then? Once the pattern is totally done, uh, there are different ways of doing this. It depends. If you are a worker, then you have to make a decision. If you are mass producing or something, then you want to grade the pattern into different sizes. Okay. So in other words, you have a four, you have a six, eight, ten. That way you can produce different ones like I that. See. But if you're doing individual work like this, so whatever the size you use is what you're going to do. Okay. So okay. right now when she's totally done, we will place it on fabric, the actual fabric right. we're going to okay. use. Okay. Cut it out and then sew. I see. What are some of the mistakes that are normally made? at this process oh at this process the the mistake will be that maybe there's a little bit of gaping somewhere that mm -hmm. needs to be tackled or maybe uh, some area is a bit tight then okay. you have to look at okay. measurement again yeah. mm -hmm. to be sure that everything is in place but pattern drafting is such that if you have the right measurements to do mm -hmm. uh you don't have any issues once it's done it's done and Absolutely. it's going to fit you exactly Okay, from the pattern drafting, okay. uh, they will cut okay. and then they will bring it in here and come and start putting the pieces together. Okay, okay. So um, depending on what texture of material you're working with, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's a, a different sort of seam finish you have to okay, use. Okay, okay. So, so is that what this lady's working on at the moment? That's is what she's working on I right see. now. She's using the French seam as a seam finish. Okay. Uh, because of the texture of material she's using is very light so we want to encase the raw edges inside okay okay so that is a French seam so that's what she's just okay. done how many types of seams have we got a number of them and okay. it, it depends on texture of material I so see it, 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 I mean if I'm sewing jeans there are different types of seam finishes I would use okay okay if it's a delicate fabric like this there's also a different type of fabric that, okay you know seam I would use okay so there are okay. different types that okay. you can okay. use based on I can't the also help but notice that we've got different types of machines here um, there's about three types I've seen so far and the one that actually uh, gets me very excited is the, uh, <laughs> the, the good old, old traditional singer. Exactly. Um, so, is this a process of learning through the different types of machines? Yes, because the students mostly come in with no background. Mm -hmm. So for some, uh, they need to be slower, mm -hmm. and for some, they need to be faster. We okay. don't like to train them with a regular hand machine because we are past that age. I see. So it's got to be electric. Okay. However, some want to be slower with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. For some, it's faster. And those who feel, I'm really comfortable with this, 
mm. we'll move into using the industrial machines because that one is even much okay. more faster. Okay. So it depends on uh, how you feel and what how you think, comfortable you how are. comfortable you are. So you pick the one that works mm. for you, basically. And those who come in for the diploma, mm -hmm. what machines are they using? They go straight with the industrial machine. Wow. Everything okay. in the diploma degree is industrial. Okay. So we let them start from the beginning. So we let them go through practicing how to use a machine without running over their fingers and stuff. Why is it that when you come in at a diploma degree, you have to use industrial machines? Well, you know, the way we look at it is, a certificate is us teaching them skills. Okay. So they get to take it at the pace that they want to take it. Okay. And with a degree, it's, it's more on a higher level. I see, so I see. So you need to use the right uh, equipment for whatever it is you're doing in there. So Absolutely. we take them straight to the industrial machine and then they go through machine stitch it for a period of time till they, mm -hmm. they get mm -hmm. comfortable okay. with what they're doing. Okay. So everything in, in the degree diploma section is industrial. So we're using an industrial machine, we use the ironing board is industrial, buttonhole machine is industrial, all of it is. So they, because they are going more into some for manufacturing, that kind of stuff, so they need to know what happens. Tell me a little bit about it. That one is, the certificate program is just for a year. And uh, they, it's really intensive. Okay. And they do a lot of work. Okay. I mean, by the time they're done uh, in the year, they should have done 10 garments. 10 garments? 10 garments okay. by the time they're done. And, and using different textures of materials mm -hmm, to do it. Mm -hmm. And they sew to their body type or somebody mm -hmm. else's basically but it's more developing their the skills for them so those who want to go there and do my own work when i'm right. done are able to do these things so okay, okay that's what the certificate program really I is i see about. and it's yeah. been extremely successful so very far, much so we've done this for 20 years now okay yeah wow very much so.
Welcome to Fashion Guru, the Celebrity Designer Edition. And today, I'm with none other but the one and only iconic figure, Joyce Abbeville. Joyce, welcome. Thank you. Nice to be in your presence. I feel like I'm in the presence of royalty here. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, I've done a little bit of research about you before I came and I thought, wow, you know, it goes without saying. It's understated even saying you're an iconic figure in fashion in this country. Well, I've done some. You've done I some? I suppose. Very <laughs> modest. <laughs> I've done some. Everybody's played some role, I suppose. So. Right. So, listen. Let's get to know you. Mm -hmm. I think uh, these, this question may have been asked in the past several times. But I still am intrigued by the person. Um, and I, I did read somewhere that you always knew this was something you were going to do. Mm -hmm. And that your mum was actually a seamstress. Is this correct? Yes, it's correct. So, how did that transcend to you? Well, um, I remember when I was a year old, my mom was in London and um, she went to do fashion design as well. Okay. So, uh, as I was growing up, I was usually around her when the things were being produced. Oh, okay. And you know those days we had, uh, I, I don't know how young you are, but there was Kingsway and... I do Fanstow remember Kingsway. And, <laughs> and, uh, I do remember GNTC those two. Yeah, 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 GNTC, yeah. Exactly. So she used to produce for those shops. Okay, okay. So I remember hanging around her table when these things were being done. And wow. I, I can actually visualize some of the works that they used to do. And the finish was amazing. The finish at that time was yes. amazing. And I, I can wow. actually remember that. Wow, wow. So I think it, it came really um, easy for me. I always okay. knew what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And um, even in school, I went to Achimoto Secondary School and uh, I would uh, send to my sister and tell her, this is the design, I want ah. to make it for me. And then when I was home, I would make something for myself and my best friend at the time. I see. So this was something I used to do and I also took needlework uh, or clothing and okay. textiles. Okay. At what age roughly was that? Um, 13, 14, 13. Wow. 15, okay. that, started quite you know, young yeah, then, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I always knew what I wanted to do. Wow. The two things you mentioned there, um, the fact that your mom actually did this. Mm -hmm. Do you think something like this is hereditary? Did you get it from her? I don't know. I, 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 well, I don't think it is because my daughter doesn't do this. Oh, I see. So it hasn't passed on. <laughs> it didn't pass on. So who's very creative? Okay. But she doesn't uh, uh, work with garments as I, I do. I but see. she's very creative in so many different ways. Wow. You know, so and it comes there, easy for her. But it comes in yes, a different form. Exactly. So who's going to take care of this whole empire? Uh, she's still the one who's going to take care of it because <laughs> I have two and she's the oldest. You mentioned something about, I heard you say Achimoto Secondary School. Yes. Um, that makes you an Akura, is that correct? I'm an Akura, yes. Akura. What house were you in? Clark House. Clark House. Mm -hmm. Apparently all the mama buzz are in Clark House. Is this true? Well, I used to think it was Kingsley at the time. Okay. But I like to think Clark House was also one of them. Okay, okay. <laughs> the right one. The right one. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did Achimoto layer on onto what you probably had already started doing? Um, was Achimoto College? Or secondary school secondary school influence you in any way um, further in terms of helping guide your direction for wanting to do this as a profession I think Achimoto guided my direction in in different ways other than mm. you know including this as well uh, I think part of it was being in that class and always competing with uh -huh. uh, you know so whoever was there yes, it was yeah. at the time and it was very yeah. important to me that whatever i did was the the best mm -hmm. in the class mm -hmm. but even with that i must say that i knew where i was going but i hadn't really given it that much of a thought right. you know at that time it's more i'm going to school and that's about right. it right. kind of thing so um it was when i finished that i knew that moving on this is what i wanted to do okay Okay. So I actually applied to schools in the U.S. Mm -hmm. to do fashion design. Okay, okay. However, um, that period was a period that you had to go through a certain way of uh, qualifying to okay. be able to go to the U.S. and do the course you want ah, to do okay. if your parents okay. had to send the money wow. to the school. Okay. So I okay. applied for, for to some the, sort of scholarship, I presume. It's not yeah. scholarship. It's, not. it's more like... Um, it was uh, something to allow your parents to pay to the banks and the bank would transfer the money to the school. Okay, okay, so okay. the government secretariat at the time had to approve the course you were going to do. 
Wow. So I applied for fashion design and I was turned down. It wasn't one of the you programs down. Ghana wanted anybody to go anywhere and do. And how much of it is due to the fact that we were not enlightened to understand what the fashion industry had to offer then? Bottom line. Bottom line. At all. It wasn't one of the things. And even now, it's taken years for us to Catch accept on. creativity yeah. as something important. Mm, mm, so mm. Uh, I was denied and then uh, I went back and applied with medical technology and I got that. I see. So I moved on to the U.S. I see. How long were you in the U.S. for? Uh, 13, 15 years. 13, 15 years. Yeah. A huge change in terms of environment, I exactly. presume. Exactly. Yeah. Even in your application process, mm -hmm. into how you apply yourself to work, I presume. So talk to me a little bit about that. How does that feel like being in an environment where you haven't grown up um, and having to apply yourself uh, and learn the ways of well, behavioral uh, society, etc. <laughs> I started off at St. Cloud State University, okay. which is in a very small town called St. Cloud. Okay, uh, and and okay. that is in Minnesota, by the way. Okay. So um, they weren't very used to blacks and were wow. not very comfortable with, with us. So there were a few of us in the school. Okay. And, uh, you know, it started off with you coming in with an accent. Somehow they refused to understand. Uh, and you not understanding them as no, well no. and it takes some time for yeah, you to yeah, yeah. pick that up and, and get what you're going but the interesting part was starting a class and being put in an auditorium that has tons of people and uh, you have to work with with uh, what they give you okay hmm. interesting I, i've got to ask also that what was the turning point at what point did you think this is it, and you zoned in onto that and stayed on that path. Was, at what point did this happen? Early years with the needle, maybe? Or are we looking at Achimota, the competitive side of things? Or I when did it actually, or I, was it your GNCC time where you thought, this is me, it's all me? I don't think I thought much of it at that age. Mm -hmm. I, I think I, I thought about it once I was in the university as to what I wanted to do. So by the a year and a half in St. Cloud, I knew there was no way I was going to continue doing mm -hmm. medical technology. So I transferred to another school, Texas Women's University, and it started doing fashion design okay. in that school. So at that time, I was sure of what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I knew that was the only thing. Actually, I wouldn't say it's the only thing. I always had two, a passion for two things. One of them was law and the other was law. passion. Yes. Okay, you never followed that route, did you? I followed the, the route of law for a period of time. I okay. actually worked in a law firm for about seven years. I see. Yeah. So nobody can actually pull any wool off, of your, off, your, off your eyes when it comes to uh, business. Uh, I know some, yes. <laughs> I think if I would uh, stayed in the US uh, a little bit more, I might have then gone to law school or I something see. but I, I did go to do a paralegal program for mm -hmm. a period of time that allowed me to work mm -hmm. in the law firm for a period of time and I actually enjoyed this mm -hmm. I really enjoyed being a litigation paralegal at a company called Gibson Dunn and Crutcher okay and okay. I worked there for some years mm -hmm. and I enjoyed that as well as doing my work also on the side but eventually when I had to choose between the two it was always fashion it was always going to be fashion. always fashion. but that law i presume has helped in terms it of it helps a lot the way you think yeah. and the way you reason yeah. through stuff and that for me was a good thing to Absolutely. do yes so you're away for a period of time mm -hmm. and uh you're learning your trade um, and you return home what period of how long were you away for would you say roughly uh, about 15 years. 15 years. Well, that's a long time. Mm -hmm. I do notice you have still have a bit of an American accent, by the way. Uh, it's still there. Very subtle, it but takes, it's there. <laughs> I suppose, yes. Yeah. So you return. Mm -hmm. um, how do we go from having your qualifications, arriving in Accra, thinking, okay, this is, this is my sole vision. This is what I want to do. Do you start making clothes locally for people? And how does that evolve into what we have now, which is this industry that you've built? Well, um, I came home. Mm -hmm. I eventually came home. Uh, and a part of the reason I came home because at the time my husband had already come home for about okay. a year and a half. So it was time to come home too. So, uh, and I thought to myself, I've worked long hours in the US. I'm going to rest a year, right? but then I'll look for a place. Mm -hmm. But I've always been that kind of person that I know what I want. Right. So my thought process was I want a shop at 
where we call Oxford Street. Now, also, yeah. I didn't look left, right, nothing. I went mm -hmm. straight to Oxford Street and I'll look and come back home. <laughs> and that was the only thing I did. I looked, it had to be there. It had to be there. Mm -hmm. and, and Why? That was Why all. Oxford Street? Because it was the place, the, the happening location. place yeah. that, yeah. yes, at yeah. the time. So okay. that was very important to me. Till I eventually found one uh, in Oxford Street. And during that period uh, I was home, um, I got a, a call from a friend. Uh, there's a lady, she was here at the mm -hmm. time, she's now mm -hmm. in London, called Benaifa Chothia. Okay. And okay. she was organizing this show with Oswald Watting, Joe Casey Hayford, wow. all okay. those people. There were models from the UK coming and all that. Mm -hmm. And she mm -hmm. said, I've heard that this is what you do. Okay. Do you want to okay. join us? And, and they only had, I was given one month to wow. basically join in this. And I thought to myself, why not? Let's do this. Yeah. So I pull out a machine, I pull things out, I put my collection together and I begin and I work myself to the bone for a month by myself, mm. basically. I ended up doing, my, my, my specialty is gowns, so wow. I love okay. doing gowns. So right. I did wedding gowns and cocktail outfits mm. and then I joined in the show mm. and when I was done with that show, I was already there. Mm. I mean everybody's looking for you. I didn't, the shop wasn't open yet, so uh, they would come home. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of me in Ghana. The three things you said there that actually resonates with me a little. And it's, um, the first one I think is to do with the fact that you focus on Oxford Street. And that is where you had to be, mm -hmm. and you went for it. You didn't get distracted with anything else. No. You were not thinking of secondary options. Mm -mm. Um, that. That, on its own, for me, says a lot about you, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of if you want something, you go for it. Am That's I right? me, yes. It is? Yeah. Okay. I also like the idea that you um, mentioned that you were given a month to prepare for something. And more often than not, people think, oh, it's too much, it's going one month. But you looked at the bigger picture, the opportunity, mm -hmm. and you did it, and you delivered it. Yeah. That must have been a challenge. It was. Uh, I remember when uh, the show was over, I think I slept straight through a day. Wow. <laughs> I didn't wake up, I mean, I was just exhausted. So I, I it, was a, it was a challenge and this is, I'm glad I did that. This is more like I, one of those things, suffer now and then enjoy later, later. Isn't it? Yes, exactly. Wow, what an extremely impressive life so far. And I'm sure our viewers want to learn more about you and your industry when we return. You've heard it from the horse's own mouth. This is Joyce Abbeview, an iconic figure in the world of fashion. We'll be right off after this break to learn more about what she does and how she does it. Don't go away. The iconic Ghanaian designer. We've learned a little bit about her today what makes her tick, what inspires her, and how she's created this fantastic empire. So I want us to now look at some of her accolades, some of her achievements. Welcome back, Joyce. Thank you. I couldn't help but notice, looking through these magazines, um, and you modeled, you modeled yourself, actually. Exactly. Quite impressive. <laughs> Is that one of the things you'll add to your accolades? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> You're not a model. No, this one, they wanted me to be there. I so. see. Yeah. I read somewhere uh -huh. that you were one very daring lady to actually take a national fabric that has so much heritage <laughs> and history mm -hmm. and try and modernize it. I'm sure you had your challenges with this Kente revolution that you embarked on. Well, Kente is uh, it's a challenge to work with Kente to start with because of uh, the different ways people do it. Right. And uh, sometimes it's not quite accurate, so you have to unpick and piece it back together to be able to get it to work. But Seriously, I think it's the easiest fabric to deal to with. To use. Yes. You also said something about revolutionizing the Kente material, making it attractive and making it modern to suit the modern consumption. Exactly. Talk, so talk to me a little bit about that. Well, um, you know how Kente cloth was always the traditional cloth. Uh, you know, our parents will pass it on mm -hmm, to us mm -hmm. and stuff like that. 
When I came back to Ghana some years ago, my mom gave me one made out of silk. That was okay. during the Nkrumah time. Okay. They made them out of silk, not the rayon they use these days. They use okay. rayon, they call it silk, but it's not silk. Mm, mm. And I thought to myself, why is this um, hiding in a, a, a trunk? Okay. And, you know, and we need to be able to use it because it stays there until some occasion and mm -hmm. if it continues mm -hmm. to stay there we the younger generation are not going to use it absolutely so i thought the thing to do is to change colors so okay. that every season the sort of colors that are in is the same one that is used for kente instead of the 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 yellow the green and, and red and yellow yeah. you know they have some burgundy one that mm -hmm. they usually mm -hmm. use mm -hmm. and then change the design as well and make it uh, much more attractive mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. everybody can see themselves in Kente. I see. And Kente cloth, because of the fact that it was passed on generation to generation, most people wouldn't cut it. You know, okay. they sew it in a way that the fabric is inside. Ah, but okay. I thought, you know, if we change it and everybody can use this, this will be something to show off Ghana. Mm -hmm. Basically, mm -hmm. this is what we have. We ought to be able to show it off instead of uh, letting people come in here, pick it up and use it as throw bags, mm -hmm. cushions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that irritated me. Mm -hmm. I, I thought we should wear this mm -hmm. and people see it as the fabric to use. Mm -hmm. Did you feel you were breaking the mold? And did you have any challenges or any, any people who were actually doubting? that you are trying to well, do something different with kente? You would have some that would come with a kente cloth and say, no, you can't cut it. Uh, you know, you still have to sew it that way and you have a lot of convincing to do mm -hmm, or to show mm -hmm. them what you can do with it and the fact that you can style it anyway. Wow, okay. And you have to be able to mm, cut it. Mm, so mm. those were the challenges that we had. But mm. in changing it from the colors to the different designs in it and stuff mm -hmm. uh, was really, everybody took to it really quickly to the point where at some point people would have parties and the part the their dress code oh, wow. would be kente. Kente. <laughs> you know, so That's a revolution that exactly. right there. So that where you can actually have a that kente. That took party. on very yeah? well, yes. Yeah. This particular one you're wearing here, I looked at it and it didn't even occur to me that that was kente. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I thought it was, uh, but for certainly for, for a start, the colors were not the traditional colors. Mm -hmm. And secondly, it seems to be an inside some sort of a lace. Exactly. So what's, what's this? What's the inspiration behind this? So the, the goal is to be able to use it any way you want mm, it. Mm. It shouldn't strictly just be um, the usual slit. Yeah, yeah. You know, before it used to be slit and then you have a white top on it. Oh, I see, okay. And, but then some people will be daring enough to use it for the cover. And the reason why they had the white top is because the white top could be cut but the kente cloth, you didn't cut it. Okay. So that I was see. at the bottom. I see. Okay. That's the whole thing. So uh, right now, it's done anyway. This one I'm wearing, um, I took the design mm -hmm. at the border to run through the entire kente. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. I also uh, did an overlay of the of, uh, tool on top of it. Okay. So it, it gives it a dressier look mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, you know, much more elegant. I see. And then it has all the bead work at the bottom. Underneath it yeah, as well. Exactly. Wow. Okay. So you've achieved a lot, Joyce. And several people have come through your tutelage who are full-fledged designers in their own right. Mm -hmm. Tell me about a few of them and how proud you are of them. Well, I have a lot that I'm proud of, a whole lot of them that I'm very proud of. Some of them you haven't heard of them because, you know, it takes uh, finances to pull yourself to a certain level. I see. But I know what they are doing. At whatever the level they are at, they are doing amazing good mm, work. Mm. But they are those that you've heard of. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the one that comes out all the time is Christy Brown. Christy Brown, yes. Because uh, she's broken it into a whole different level. Okay. So okay. She, you hear of her a lot. But I have from Christy Brown to Ophelia Crossland, for instance, has two labels. She does for children. She does for, you know, adults. So she has two labels. I have B. Vinage who is doing amazing work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, there's uh, Bridget Smirky, Ibrahim. There are quite a number of them. Mm -hmm. And recently mm -hmm. we've had some, one that won two of them, that actually won the Blisco uh, challenge, something that was done, oh, they see. won that. That was okay. Alinafi won one, mm -hmm. and Sarah Hong also won one. Okay. And they're doing amazing work. Wow. There's also Pistis, Pistis, uh, 
two of my students, they met here, they got married, they run their own wow. business, and they do amazing. They met like in your yes, premises? Yes, in here, yes, oh, wow, and they do amazingly good work. Wow. Yeah. So there are lots of them that, that you've heard of, and lots of them you haven't heard of, but uh, in, in the section they are working in, people know how well they yeah, can do yeah, yeah. what they do. So, Joyce Abibio, the icon. Uh, I know a lot of people who aspire to become like you. And for them, the future is you. Um, does your future get any brighter? Do you see it getting bigger? Do you see it getting better? And what does that look like for you? That's somebody who will say, I'm in my future <laughs> already. <laughs> exactly. As it is. I am here. <laughs> yes, but I see it growing some more because mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have. Uh, a development coming up at Prom Prom mm -hmm. for the school. Oh, okay. There's going to be uh, the campus is coming in Prom Prom. Okay. Okay. Because this is a creative school that does not just fashion design. Okay. We do graphic design. We do textile design. We do interior design. Okay. Okay. And and, and different things that we add on as we go along. Oh, I see. So the campus is going to have the different departments okay. to be able to do all these things okay. that we want okay. to do. So I would like to think by the time we are done with that, I should be done. Wow. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> and she still wants yeah. more. <laughs> I should be done. I should be done by then. World domination is what you seek. <laughs> I'm looking for a school that is um, a, a creative school mm -hmm. that is for West Africa. Okay and all the African countries can come mm, and learn mm. and I want a certain look and feel when mm, you are in the school mm, where you are mm. most comfortable and it's able to bring your creative mm, thing mm, out mm, to do mm. a good work. Wow. So that's what I hope for. Wow. I've got to say, I've got to thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for having us. And I've really, really enjoyed spending a day with you today. I've got to say, the one thing that actually is going to stay with me is I have an absolute taste for fashion, uh, but I think I've underestimated what actually goes into the processes and the hard work yeah. that goes into processes of actually conception to completion. So thank you again for enlightening me. Thank you for having me too. Appreciate that. Thank you. Well, you heard it all. It's been an absolute delight today, spending time with the iconic lady herself, Joyce Abebio. She has educated me, she's taught us a lot. Hopefully you've also picked some things out of it. We've learned a little bit about her, her history. We've learned about what inspires her. We've actually taken a tour through her university college. And through this process, we've actually educated ourselves and hopefully you as well. Thank you so much for joining us on Fashion Guru, your celebrity designer edition. And next week, we'll have something else for you.